Well, good morning, everyone, on behalf of the moderator. We're using more and more materials, and at the end of their life, we have to do something with them. We'll try to avoid using them, we try to recycle, and we try to do something else, as I'll discuss here, with them. First, I want to talk about the global landfilling picture. Uh, this is from a study we made recently. It's about a billion and a quarter of uh, tons of solid waste landfilled globally. Uh, United States, as in everything else, we are first. We are 20% of the total is U.S. And also, U.S. per capita is the largest generator of waste. Uh, we generate about twice as much as uh, per capita as the Japan and the European Union. And of course, there, there's a lot of room for reducing waste. Now, from the landfill material, there is emissions. And the emissions, the one most usually talked about is methane. And of methane, there's 50 million tons of methane, of which, after efforts to recover landfill gas, and more and more should be done of that, and this can only be done in modern sanitary landfills, 45 million tons are emitted still. It is about corresponding, because methane is potent, to 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide, about 4 to 5% of the global. So it's really the low-hanging fruit on the tree if you want to do something about global warming. In contrast, now, the global waste to energy picture uh, you can see there a number of nations which are participating. There are about 37 nations that are doing uh, in some ways. U.S. is amongst them, you can see. Japan is the largest uh, user of WTE. The total was, in 2002, was 143 million tons. And interestingly enough, there have been 13 million tons of new capacity since 2002. Some of that is in China. If you have a lot of land, uh, sanitary landfills are much, much superior to the dumps of the past because they try to control uh, effluents, liquid effluents, and also they capture 50 to 60 percent of the uh, emissions. But if you don't have landfills near you, you need to send the waste some other place. And this is a map prepared by the Congressional Research Service in Washington which shows you how trucks move from one state to another, in many cases in two directions. This is because somebody found a low cost landfill in one place, in one state, somebody else from the other state, and the trucks cross along the highway. <clears throat> one thing it may not be recognized is waste to energy as, you, as is used in the United States, and it's used by 30 million people in the United States depend on waste to energy to treat their non-recyclable waste. Again, that's a thing we want to stress. Communities try and should try to recover as much recyclable materials as possible. It's only when the materials cannot be recycled, either the people don't put them aside, or there are no markets, or whatever is the reason, then we say instead of landfilling, they should go to waste to energy. And waste to energy, as you can see here, is a major source of renewable energy in the United States. You can see it's more than solar, thermal, solar photovoltaic, and wind put together. All of this should be promoted, of course, but here is one source of renewable energy that's already in place. It's another problem with landfills, even the sanitary, is that they require space. Now, if you're in Mex New Mexico or in Arizona or some place where there is a lot of space, maybe you can say we can landfill forever, create sanitary landfills, again, the best you can make. And here you can see one of the best landfills in the in, in the U.S., it's the Los Puentes Hills in California. Now, you can see this has developed into a, a mountain. Around this mountain, there are communities. There's a buffer zone of about one kilometer, half a mile, let's say, where people cannot build because when you make a landfill, there are smells and so on. The communities who use that, and the millions of people, have run out of landfill space. The same thing has happened in New York, fresh kills. And so they're going to need another one of that. How many of those? Five of those in the 21st century, if they, of course, they, if they depended on landfilling for the non-recyclable. <clears throat> now, of course, there's no room for there. There's no room in California for that. So they are thinking of a train service, which might bring the waste into the desert someplace, you know, one way. And they are also looking, as you know, California for other means, including thermal treatment. 
So landfills take place. New York City, if it continues to depend on landfilling for this century, it would require something like 10,000 acres. So what's 10,000 acres? Multiply this by the population of the United States, by 1,000 years of, let's say, of the, of the nation in the future, and you realize that land is an important part. <coughs> now, in, uh, in 2006, Columbia University and an organization we have there, which is addressed to waste management, had um, a competition which is one of the best waste to energy plants. The photograph shows one of them, it's in Brescia. The one on the right shows the Oscar, let's say, that uh, such awards get. Why I show this is because th there were 10 plants, finalists, that participated in this competition. Uh, plants like Spitalau in Vienna, famous plants, London, uh, Amsterdam, and so on and so forth. And if you took those 10 plants together and you averaged the various emissions, you can see them there, particulates, SO2, and so on, all the emissions, down to dioxins. And in these 10 plants, there were four US facilities. The average is a fraction of what is the European Union standard.